think of a family car and you think of a hatchback, an estate or an SUV. But what about this? The Citroen eSpace Tourer is, well, let's not dress it up. It's a van turned people carrier, complete with a pure electric powertrain, offering an official WLTP range of 136 miles and costing from around about £32,000. But it might be doing the eSpace Tour a bit of a disservice to just lump it in as a van because it is based on the company's EMP2 platform, which is a big scalable modular platform that also underpins the Citroen C5 Aircross SUV, which you could even consider a rival to this because that's a seven-seat SUV. And because it is based on that same platform, it does have kind of some car-like driving characteristics. So these days, vans really are getting really good to drive. And I think a lot of people are starting to consider them as really practical family cars, as well as just kind of a commercial a prospect. So I think in that respect, it's a really interesting one. Styling wise, yeah, okay, yeah, it looks like a van, doesn't it? Let's just face it, it's a van. Um, but for all that, I think you're not gonna buy this for its style sort of street cred anyway, are you? It's not about kudos. It's about being unbelievably practical, starting with sliding doors on both sides of this thing, which is great. And I mean, check it out in here. I have got nine seats in here, all of them with inertia seat belts. It's really, really good. And I can totally see why you might be thinking about this as a family car if you have got quite a big family to carry around. There are two trims in the eSpace Tourer. The business edition gets three sets of Isofix fittings across the middle row, and it's even wide enough that you'll get a chunky car seat in the middle and two adults either side if you need to. It can also optionally be had with a three-person bench up front to take the passenger capacity up to nine in total, and there's the longer wheelbase option if you need that people carrying capacity as well as space for all of their luggage. Flare trim isn't offered with the nine-seat layout, but in its standard eight-seat format, you get five Isofix fittings, three along the back row, and two in the middle row seats, which also slide and recline. There's even an executive seating layout with two individual seats in the middle row. Plus, there are masses of luxuries and comforts as standard, but at around £48,000, it costs a whopping £16,000 more than the much more basic business edition. Boot space is as cavernous as you'd expect, with 655 litres of luggage space behind that third row, even in this shorter wheelbase business edition. If even that isn't enough space for you, well, you can actually take out the third and second row of seats in the eSpace Tourer, leaving a proper van-like carrying capacity. Predictably, it is not very sexy or premium up here, um, but it has to be said, as business edition, for the price of this thing, £32,000, there or thereabouts, um, I don't think you're going to quibble, are you? I certainly wouldn't. Um, it feels durable. I actually really don't mind it up here. Yes, it's very grey, a bit scratchy. Who really cares at that price? I think that's exactly what you're going to expect. Um, it's pretty comfortable too. I think that's far more important. You do get manual lumbar adjustment on the driver's seat, which is great because I've got a bit of a creaky back these days and I find that really important. Um, the seat itself is a bit firm, to be honest, and a bit flat, but I still think with that lumbar adjustment, you can spend you know, long miles on this and you'll be fine especially because that van driving position, you know, elbow on the windowsill, quite high set upright, it's really comfy, isn't it? Good visibility, apart from to the back, these big headrests can get in the way. Um, you get your touch screen, the graphics are, they're all right, you can see it fine. It's got all the features that you want. Um, you've got your nav, your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, really good. Sound system's a bit tinny. Again, you're gonna expect anything else? Probably not. Uh, so it really does do the job. I think that's kind of the strap line for the eSpace Tour. It is so fit for purpose and so kind of ruthlessly practical and unassuming and unashamed about the fact that it's just there to do the job. And that's what I think I really like about it and what a lot of people are going to really like about it. Um, so I don't really have any problems with it apart from, right, here is my completely standard, not too massive travel mug, bit of a coffee fiend. Um, there are more storage spaces in this vehicle than I think I've ever seen in anything else. It's proper van style. You've got a massive bin up here. You've got your glove box. You've got your pen holder. You've got cubbies here. Uh, my first flat was smaller than the door bin in this van. It's ridiculous. So many places to put things, but there are only two tiny cup holders and they're not big enough for a standard travel mug. So what is that about Citroen? What are you thinking? So apart from that, which I think is completely crackers, uh, I really actually quite like this. A bigger gripe than that is that the business edition doesn't come with a reversing camera, which would be a really useful touch in a car that's this long. The big Citroen gets a 50 kilowatt hour battery that can rapid charge at up to 100 kilowatts, meaning an 80% charge in around about 30 minutes. Plug into a standard seven kilowatt home charger and you'll have a full battery in under eight hours, 
and you can also pay £300 to upgrade to 11 kilowatt AC charging, which will deliver a full battery in more like five hours if you have access to a three phase 11 kilowatt charging point. So that is what you need to know about all of your charging stuff. I'm going to talk about real world range because I think that's going to be more of a concern for a lot of people than what the eSpace Tourer is like to drive. Now, like I've mentioned, 136 mile official range in this. Now, you might actually get that by my experience in the summer. So it's really kind of balmy and warm. It's been about 25 degrees the last few days. Um, and I've seen this do slightly over 136 miles in the real world. Um, it does drop fairly quickly on the motorway. And I have noticed in a lot of the Stellantis vehicles, which includes this and Peugeots and DS and all of that stuff, the range readouts can be a bit tricky. They tend to be a little bit optimistic when the battery's at sort of, you know, 100% or in the top quarter and then they can sort of drop really quickly when they get to 50% or less. So you need to kind of factor that in. But anyway, in the summer, I think you might actually see that 136 mile range reasonably easily. I'm quite impressed. I'm getting 3.1 to 3.2 uh, miles per kilowatt hour out of the eSpace Tourer quite easily at the moment. In the winter, and especially if you're doing a solid motorway journey, that's gonna dive pretty quickly. And I think you might even see a worst case scenario of you know, 70 to 80 miles to a full charge, which is pretty woeful um, if you're going to be doing, you know, a lot of driving in this thing. So it is what it is. It's a big vehicle. It's not going to be aerodynamically brilliant. In warmer weather, I've been quite impressed. So maybe I'm being a bit unkind on it, but I think given that it doesn't have a heat pump um, and given what it is, its nature, I do think that you need to be conscious that the range might be quite low in the winter particularly. So if you can live with the range, do you know what? I actually quite like the way this drives. And I know that sounds a bit funny, but as with the rest of it, it's just unashamed, isn't it? It's comfort oriented. This thing is on little 16 inch steel wheels. Again, I actually quite like the look of them. I don't mind that at all. Uh, and it's more functional, isn't it? And it rides quite nicely. It is a little bit choppy at low speeds. And also you can hear the suspension. In fact, that's probably the overwhelming sort of noise that you get in this when you're about town, because the motor itself is quite quiet wind noise even isn't too bad either but while it is a tiny bit choppy a little bit lumpy over speed bumps and things especially if you haven't got many people in it having weight in this improves the ride which is pretty standard stuff for sort of van and commercial vehicles it's really nice and it picks up just fine not to 60 in something like 13 seconds who really cares um, it picks up more than quickly enough to feel comfortable on real world roads slot you know slip roads onto a motorway all of that is absolutely fine um, the steering is quite slow, it's quite a lot, a lot of turns lock to lock so you can feel like there's quite a bit of arm twirling going on if you're manoeuvring around a car park. But I just like the fact that it's big and it's comfy and it's relaxing and you have an instant sense of just not really wanting to make fast progress anyway when you get into it. Going back to what we've decided is the strap line for the East Base Tourer, it does the job and uh, that is exactly what it does when it comes to how it drives as well. It does exactly what you want it to. It's fast enough, it's comfy, uh, the steering is slow, but you have confidence in it. It's fine, it just does the job. Now, regenerative braking in the eSpace Turret, this is the technology, every EV has it. When you lift off the throttle, it feels like the vehicle is braking. Um, and what it's doing is harvesting that sort of natural forward motion to improve the range in the vehicle. It's not something to be worried about. It feels quite natural. In the e-space tour, to be honest, you probably won't notice it because it feels like normal engine braking that you get in a petrol or diesel vehicle, unless you hit the B button down here and then it gets quite a bit heavier. It's nowhere near the one pedal driving that you get in the Nissan Leaf, for instance, um, but you do notice it. This works quite well, I think, on you know descents, going down a hill, uh, this kind of thing. It's quite nice to just stick it on and then you gather your energy and improves your range a little bit. One factor to consider about the eSpace Tourer is that it is quite a high vehicle at 1.9 metres tall and that might make it a bit tricky around some multi-storey car parks but because it is only 1.9 metres tall it will still have access to most car parks even those that have height restrictions typically starting from around about 2 or 2.1 metres and up. So there you have it. That is the eSpace Tourer. I would add it has got e-dispatch written on the back of this. Apparently that is a bit of a press office special. Uh, I think somebody's either just stuck the wrong badge on the back of it, something along those lines. Disregard that, it is called the eSpace Tourer. And I like it. If you want to seat loads of people and you want a great value car, this is just one of the best out there. We don't have enough seven seat vehicles in the electric classes as it is. Um, and yes, this is perhaps not the most desirable, but do you know what? 
I don't really care and I think most other people won't either. If you want to seat loads of people and you don't want it to cost a fortune, this is a fantastic option. I do think you need to treat the flare version almost as a completely different model because that really is, um, it's <laughs> so different in the way it's equipped and the way it's going to look inside, not to mention the different seating layout. Um, and even the fact that you can have that executive seating with the two individual seats, they're really going for the private sector with that. So I think if that's what you're looking for, then consider it. If you're a retail buyer, this is a no-brainer, the business edition. It's basic, but for the price, who cares? And I really like that about it. Even the monthly prices, leasing and, and PCP, they're really good too. So I think it's a lot of vehicle for the money, um, and I don't even think the range is going to dissuade people if they do want that functionality. It is so utilitarian, it's brilliant. And uh, for that reason, it is, well, it's a small class, but this is definitely one of the best electric MPVs you can buy. Don't forget to head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars. We will even tell you if it's a good deal or not. And while we've got you, please do like the video, subscribe to the Cargurus UK YouTube channel, and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos.